Close your eyes and find a spot where you can be still with the breath. And John's spot used to like to call the monastery here our quiet corner. And it's a good symbol for what you want to find in your mind. Because it's not possible to stay in a physically quiet corner all the time. Even here at the monastery, there's work to be done, people you have to interact with. So looking for a quiet place outside can get pretty impossible. We had a monk visit us one time in Thailand. He said he wanted to find a really quiet place in Thailand where there's no noise at all. So we sent him up to the top of the mountain. He came back and complained that there was this little water pump way off in the distance going pump, pump, pump. When there's no place you can find there, there's no noise, no disturbance. You have relative quiet, and you want to take advantage of this relative quiet to find a really quiet place inside yourself, something, something you can take with you when you leave. Because the world outside is always going to be a chaos of one kind or another. But you have to learn how not to be blown around. There's a part you have to have inside that just doesn't interact with things outside, doesn't get stirred up by them, no matter how bad things may be or no matter how wonderful things may be. There's got to be a part of the mind that's just quiet and watching. It's not that it doesn't know it, but it's able to stay quiet in the midst of other things. That's the kind of quiet corner you want to develop inside. So try to find it with your breath, because the breath is always there. And of the various elements of the body, it's the one that you can adjust most easily. You can make it longer, shorter, broader, more narrow, deeper, more shallow. There's a lot you can do with it, and it will have an impact on you how you experience the rest of your body. And how you experience your bodies will have a big impact on how you experience the, the rest of the world. They say that we have huge numbers of nerve endings in our stomach, and we're processing that as much as we're processing things outside. And so we want to make sure that your internal processing is calm, at peace. Because the way you feel inside your body will have a huge impact on how you react to the world outside. Remember that in the Buddha's analysis of suffering, name and form, in other words, your experience of body events and mental events, comes prior to your experience of the six senses. So it's already there making a, a difference in how you're going to receive things coming in. So you're in a position where you can put your receptors in a good shape by the way you breathe. Now we help put your mind in good shape, too. So remember that you're in charge. The world outside is going to be around you, but then at some point it will fade away. And your awareness that will still be there. So try to find this still point in your awareness and learn how to maintain that, nurture it, let it grow. Because it's around that still point that you find the only place you're going to find true peace, true well-being, both as you stay in this world and as you go on to the next, and hopefully get to the point where you don't have to go to any worlds at all, but hover around the spot. That's where all the important news is right now. <laughs>